Oh, oh wow. No way. Mm. Oh no. Has this ever happened to you? Well, it's happened to me. Most recently when I was packing up a Card Kingdom order of very valuable Magic the Gathering cards, they were shot. After drying them off, they still had wrinkles and bubbles and... But at that time I had a thought. What if I had a vacuum chamber to put them in? Would that help draw out the water? And would it happen quick enough that the card would be saved? Well, today we're gonna find out with some pokey signs. Now, let's get back to our poor S Cavalier. The thing I've noticed about Pokemon cards is they don't suck up water nearly as quickly or as easily as Magic the Gathering cards do. But you can see here, there's a little bit of wrinkling and some flared out edges. Well, let's go ahead and stick it in the chamber. This little vacuum chamber I have here is actually not very powerful. You can easily buy or make one yourself at home for very little money that can pull a lot more vacuum than this can. But we're gonna try it out anyway, and if it doesn't work, I do have a plan B. While we wait, let's get into a little bit of theory of why I think this will work. So the reason water is a liquid at room temperature is because of the pressure exerted on it by the atmosphere. The water molecules as a whole cannot overcome this pressure to go from a liquid to a gas. But if you decrease the pressure enough, you can get water to boil without changing the temperature. I don't love this graph, but basically what it's saying is a room temperature of about 23 C. We're gonna need to pull a vacuum of about 20 Tor before we can get this water to boil. Do I think that this vacuum pump can do that? Not quite, it's very old, not very powerful, but most standard pumps you can buy can easily do this. So why do I still think it might work in this pump? Well, if you notice, water evaporates even without boiling when it's just sitting there. This is because some water molecules at the surface of the water can actually have enough energy to escape. So even if you don't lower the pressure enough to get it to boil, you are greatly enhancing its ability to evaporate. Like I said, you can easily build one of these at home on your own, or you can buy one off Amazon for 80 to $100, and it should do the trick if this works, and you can just keep it near your cards just in case. I've had the card in there for about six or seven minutes now, so let's go see what we've got. We just need to turn off the pump and vent the chamber and I like to vent it fast to see the card fly around. Probably not a good idea if you're actually trying to save a card. Notice there's no lid locking mechanism. It's simply held on due to the difference in pressure. Looking here at the back of the card again, you can still see those ripples that were there before. The edge flaring looks to be completely gone. It looks pretty good, but inconclusive. So let's try again, try to get it to soak up a lot more water and we'll leave it in the chamber a little bit longer. Put a little dab over here, put a little dab over there, squirt some on here. And I'm gonna leave that for about 20 minutes. Well, here's this card. It still has not soaked up as much water as a magic card will do in less than a minute. This is ridiculous. But you can see a lot more rippling this time on the back of the card. And there's actually some sort of crease that was not there before and it was not done due to bending. It's strictly because of the water. Can't really feel it with your finger though. We'll set it in here. Have a fun ride, my little prince. Hopefully a good dose of vacuum will pull all of that water out and also pull the air out to kind of reseal or reintegrate the layers of the card to make it look just like it did before. All right, time to take it out. This one I left in here a little bit longer than the last one. I did not try to dry the card off at all before I put it in there, so there are some water stains which can just be rubbed off gently, but wow, I'm actually really impressed. The crease is almost unnoticeable, at least on the bottom. There's still a little bit of rippling on the back, not a whole lot, not very noticeable. The edges look good. And if you get it just in the right light, you can still see that crease that went down the whole card before. Well, that's pretty impressive, but I think we can do better. So on to plan B. This is the Cryo Tour. It's a cryo pump that uses liquid helium to cool and condense gases and exhaust them away. This sucker can very quickly pump down a large chamber to 0, 0.0000 Tour or below. And this is what we're gonna try next. Ooh. Oh man, not again. Okay, so it's been sitting in this water for about 30 minutes. Interestingly, it has warped, but it has not creased like our previous card did. The back is loaded with very visible wrinkling. If I even touched this thing right now, it would likely rip off the surface. Again, the front looks pretty decent because this isn't a magic card and it doesn't just gobble up water. Time to set it in the chamber and give this thing the ride of its life. It's either going to be as good as new when it comes out, or it's going to be ripped to shreds. And I'm excited to find out. We'll go over to the computer and start the pump down. And we can watch it quickly reduce the pressure in the chamber far lower than our last pump could. A little while later, it's already down to the e to the negative 4, and then quickly e to the negative 5. Took about five or six minutes to pump down most of the way, and I let it sit in there for five minutes, so it's time to vent the chamber. 
The sound of the chamber venting sounds a lot like what I imagine it would sound like if one were to hug very tightly, wheezing. We're finished venting and we can finally open up the chamber door and see what we've got. The front really didn't look different before, so it's hard to tell so far, but the card is not in pieces, so that is a very good sign. No damage on the front that I can see. It's still got a slight warp to it, but there's no creases or anything, so it's not really a big deal. Turning it around, oh my gosh, this card seriously looks brand new. There is certainly no sign that it's ever touched water. There's a little speck down here, just some dust. I am actually really surprised that this worked. The theory is logical, but a lot of times in practice, theory doesn't work out as well as it should. I think the real test here would be to do it to an expensive card, then send it in for grading and see what we get. See if they can tell that this has had water damage in the past. And honestly looking at it, I don't think they would be able to. Here are the final results from the two separate pumps. Sadly, the Krussel we used, I don't remember why, but I had ripped it up at one point. Probably just classic Krussel back mouthing. So can't show you that one. They honestly both look really good, and I know you're not going to have access to a cryo pump, but I think if you're someone who has a high dollar collection and you're a serious collector, you might want to look into a cheap vacuum pump just to keep in your card room or nearby. So what do you think of this? Tell me down in the comments. Are you going to get a vacuum chamber for your cards now? Have you ever thought about or tried this before, or am I the first one? Pokey Science, success. But what should I do next?